now we're going to move on to this more complex thing here. You see, these are three items that are the same in structure, but different in content. So we're just going to make one and then duplicate it and change its content. But even one of these is relatively complex. So if we look at it, you'll see we have one box here with the image. We have one box here with the page number, this gray box. And then we have another box with the text. It can be a single box even if the text is formatted differently. And the weirder part is actually that the text is not aligned centered or uh, to the edge of the box. It's just apparently just floating there somewhere. So I'll show you how we're going to do that in a bit. So first of all, let's see where this goes. Again, I'm going to hit W. And the way in which this is thought up is that uh, the whole element, so from the bottom of the box here to the top of the image, fits between this line here and this at the top, just underneath the black line. So for now, we're going to eye it. Again, normally you would have a much clearer structure, but this is a simplified exercise to begin with. And I'm just going to make a text box that comes from the bottom line here, two columns wide, exactly, and up to, let's say, about the middle of the space between the column, the, the rows here. This is my text box. I'm gonna take this text, copy it, control C and paste it, control V, uh, and format it. So I'm just gonna hit enter because these are separate paragraphs, select the name here and this is Avant guard, avant guard, EF normal. This is this one. And it's 12 point in size, so it's fine. I don't have to change anything. And this is the same font we've used for the main title here. So it's Bodoni URW wide extra bold. And the size is. 16 points. Uh, so you see this is now in the upper left corner. We're going to have to move it a bit. Before that, I want to actually see, see this box. So with the box selected, again, just clicking on it simply with the black arrow tool, I'm going to go up here to the line settings and I'm going to choose so half a point, maybe it needs to be thicker, but no, I think half a point is okay. And you can see already that when you have text inside a box, even if you don't have anything else, it doesn't look very good if it's just touching the edge. So you need to give it some extra space. This is almost a rule for whenever you put text inside a box. But here we have to give it a lot of space so the image can fit in there. Um, and right now I'm going to tell you the space, the amount of space we need. Normally you should place the image there and then check it out. But now I've, I've already gone through this. So let me show you how to insert some spacing inside a box of text. You select the box and right click. And here in the contextual menu, you have text frame options. Click on this. And you have this area of values called inset spacing. And you can change the values here. So for example, I want a lot of space on the left. So I'm just going to click in the box here that says left. And I'm going to put in 30 millimeters. 
and you see I got I get this line showing me where that edge is and the text is pushed. And I also want to push it a bit downwards, so I'm just going to add 3 millimeters at the top. And this is where it's supposed to be. If you don't see this happening as you type the, uh, the values, you need to check preview here in the corner. And I'm just going to click OK. And this is what I want. And now I'm going to bring in the photo. Um, and actually, I'm going to make the box for the photo be before I bring it in, because if I just bring the photo in, you click, you see it's going to be very big. So I, I can, I could just resize it here, but I'm going to make the box beforehand just so I see what I'm doing and then I'm going to bring the image. So I'm going to come in from this upper blue line here, leave about the same amount of space. So I want this space here. Let me color this for you so you see what I mean. This space here to be the same uh, on the side and on the bottom. and here between the text and the photo. So we have a bit of structure. That's about the spacing I want. Uh, I'm gonna eye it. This time I'm just gonna go close to what I'm trying to, uh, to do here. Because as I said, we're not going to try to be perfect with this document as it's the first exercise and I left some details out of the entire structure. So I'm just going to get come up here and try to check out. And I think something like this is okay. So now I, that I have the box, I'm just going to drop the image inside it and you see it's really big. So what I can do is go to fitting, right click it and go to fitting and just click here, fit content proportional. There's, there are also buttons for all of this. So this is fit content proportionally up here. Um, I can do it from wherever and it's just gonna fit everything but it leaves empty spaces at the top and at the bottom so maybe the better option is the first button here or if i right click again and go to fitting the first option fill frame proportionally which leaves no empty space in the box and that's actually what i want but now obviously because his face is cut i'll want to move the image a bit in the box. So I'm just going to click the circle here and hold shift. I don't have to right now because it's locking by itself, but I'm going to hold shift just to make certain and move this towards the left. And this is actually what I want. And now I'm going to click the box again and make sure it also has an outline. Now, the weirder thing here happens with this little element, this little gray box with the page number. I'm going to make it and you'll see why that is. I'm just going to make a text box here uh, wherever. It doesn't really matter. You'll see if I try to make it inside the box with the text tool, it just wants to activate the text. So I'm going to start making it outside and move it where it's supposed to be. Just write the page number here. So three. Um, set this to avant-garde normal. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, this is 11 points in size. 
And also I need to center it both horizontally from the text alignment settings and vertically from the text box alignment. We've did, done this before. And the next thing, now so before we place this where it should be, the next thing I'd like to do is change the color of the box. So now I have the box selected and I'm actually even going to move it here so you can see a bit better what's going on. And I'm coming back to the top here. And when I have a box, these two indicators that showed me the color of the text and the color of the outline of the text no longer have a T inside them. And now they're the color of the box and the color of the outline of the box. There's no color for either of them. But I want to fill the box, so I'm going to choose the arrow for this upper option. And again, I'm going to choose black and take this down to 30% so I get gray, a lighter gray. And now I'm going to place this right in the corner here. And you'll see what happens when I zoom in here and place it exactly on the intersection there, you will see it covers the line a bit. And we don't want it to cover the line, we want it to be under the line. We could theoretically make it just a big, bit smaller, but that's a bit hit and miss. So it's important to understand how the order of objects, what's called the stacking order, works in InDesign. This is very, very commonly used. So each object comes in on top of another object. So if I make here a box and give it a color and then make another box and give it another color, you'll see it comes on top of it. It covers it and you can't really change that order by just moving them around. Every time you make an object, it comes above everything that's uh, been created before it. But you can move these. And there are two ways in which you can do that. You can either come into the layers panel here. Whoops, just a second, like this. And you have this little arrow in front of where it says layer one. If you click that, it's going to open and show you all of the contents of the layer. And you can kind of tell what is what. The lines are all called the same, but otherwise you can see either the names of the files or uh, the text that's in the box. Here I just have rectangle uh, because there's no file and no text. But I can see which one is selected by looking at this little blue tr uh, blue square. So you can move the objects in this list. What's at the top is on top of everything. What's at the bottom is underneath everything. So if I move the first rectangle underneath the second one, you can see the yellow one coming up on top. So this is one way I can do this. So what I should be doing here is dragging this, this box here and I can select it if I click on this square and you see now it's selected under this one Andre metamorphose just click on it and you see this is the big one so I can drag this underneath and now you see nicely how the line comes above my box here this is one way in which to do it I'm gonna move it back just to show you the other way uh, if you're just moving one step or just sending something straight to the back, if you right click an object, you have uh, this arrange submenu here where you have these options with very useful shortcuts, control square brackets up and down or open and closed. And you can send something backward, which means, let me work with these two examples again, which means 
since this red one is uh, so, sorry since this yellow one is at the top right now if i click arrange and send to uh, send backward it moves one element i'm going to actually no i'm yeah i'm going to double click it to change its name so i know what this is and double click this as well it's a bit slow for some reason all this red so arrange and send to send backward just moves one step down the objects don't have to overlap it still moves down in the list and they would overlap when they intersect um, and now the red is on top and you'll see I have a few uh, slightly different options. If I have a range here, I have both bring to front, bring forward, send backward and send to back. For red, I only have uh, send backwards and send to back because there's nowhere forward higher for it to go. So if I also click this yellow one again and s select a range and send to back, you'll see it goes to the very bottom of the list. And if I click and arrange bring to front, it goes to the top. So bring to front brings it to the top. Since it's already at the top, this is no longer available. But for the red one, it is. Bring to front moves it at the top. Send to back sends it to the bottom of the list. Bring forward moves it one step up, send backward moves it one step down. So when you don't have too many steps to go or you just want to go to the extremes, it's very easy to use these and use the shortcuts. If you want to see a bit more clearly what you're doing, it's simpler to come to the layers panel and, uh, and just click and drag the object. By the way, to delete an object, you just select it and hit delete on the keyboard. And if you don't have this layers panel, you can go to the window menu and there's the layers option here, or you can hit F7 and it will come up. Now, again, I'm going to just drag this page three under the box with the text. Now you've also seen it move. And this is our element here done. Next, we're going to copy it and change the content.